And welcome back to the Financially Simple Experience. Today, we're going to talk about turning our employees into our biggest advocates. Five ways we can turn critics into advocates. We want to gain employee buy-in. One thing is true. As people, we crave routine. We love routine. There's a security that we lean into whenever we have the set patterns in our life. We don't like change. In fact, I'm, I'm thinking right now, uh, Paul Mettler that I had on the podcast who wrote a book about the reality of change and the very fact that we as humans hate change. But yet as business owners or as managers, we're constantly pushing forward through change. We're always having to negotiate various obstacles, various circumstances, roadblocks in front of us. You know, it's one thing to set the vision, to say, hey, we're going from Knoxville to Portland, Oregon. We're going to drive out in this direction. It's one thing to set the vision. But man, it's another thing to be able to navigate with the slowdowns, the roadblocks, the, the, the meteorites that perhaps could somehow get in your way. You know, in business, we set visions all the time, but yet life happens. We've all personally experienced this in the last few years with COVID. My goodness, the monumental amount of change that we had to focus on, it was just, it was crazy. It was crazy. I never in my life dreamt I would see something like that as a business owner. But yet, whenever we're going through these change, we as business owners can almost see where we're going and realize that the, that the incremental obstacles are really not that big of a deal. But our team, my goodness, our team Oftentimes, we, we leave them. We go so fast that we don't think about how are they perceiving this, what's happening in their life. So I'm going to talk about how to turn employees who can quickly become critics into advocates. First, we have to acknowledge there is a difference between adoption and buy-in. Adoption and buy-in. I love the book Extreme Ownership by Jocko Willick. Love the book. In fact, I've listened to it many times on Audible because I love the raspiness of these Navy SEALs as they're sharing real-life stories and then applying it to us in the business world. What we're talking about is this ownership, not just following an order, but embodying the very order, embodying the mission on, hey, here's where we're going. I've used this before on the podcast, but when I was growing up, my uncle and my dad would, would taught me a simple principle. They said, son, there's only three answers, and that is yes, sir, no, sir, or no excuse, sir. In other words, if I'm assigned a task, I can say, yes, sir, I'll take on the task, and it becomes my responsibility. Or I can say, no, sir, I don't understand. I don't understand how this works. And ultimately, at the end of the day, if I choose to take on a task, then it is my responsibility, and there are no excuses. Again, extreme ownership. You know, adoption, adoption of a mission, adoption of the vision for your company, for your division, for your product, for your service, can take place without buy-in. You can have a team that has fully committed to adopting the principles or adopting the product or the service that you're applying to your customers and clients. However, unless they're fully bought in, unless they take on this extreme ownership, the adoption will fall apart very quickly. At the, at the first time that there's difficulty or an inconvenience, adoption falls apart. It becomes very jaded. It becomes disjointed. And our employees, those that we need to help us drive our mission, become the biggest critics. You see, if your team doesn't understand the changes that are being made, the vision to where you're going, why things are happening, then they can't buy in. They need to know what's taking place. Without having your employees on board and you're trying to get a team to unify goal, implementation will fail. I often use football as an analogy. And in East Tennessee, we have the Tennessee Volunteers. And I'll cheer for the Volunteers as long as they're not playing the University of Georgia. But could you imagine the head coach of any major team, let's use football in this analogy, trying to to guide their team to a national championship or a Super Bowl, and yet none of the team members are in complete agreement with how they're going to get there, you have dis disjointedness or discord be between the quarterback and the line. The line just lets the, the, the tackles come in, the, the defense come in and just cream the quarterback. You would never get anywhere. Or better yet, the quarterback and the wide receivers are on different game plans. One's running an L route, the other one's running a, a Hail Mary. You would never connect. 
It's for injury. We have to have our team all facing the same end zone, playing the same game plan. Adoption without buy-in means your team is simply following orders. Now, that may work in the military. But outside the military, where we don't have court-martial, outside the military, you're not able to receive the best from our team or from our business. Now, on the other hand, buy-in means your employees have caught the vision. They know where you're going. They trust you as a leader, as a manager. They believe in what you're trying to accomplish. And, hey, they're willing to climb mountains with you. Not for you, but with you. You see, when you have employee buy-in, it transcends individual needs. There's an old proverb that says, where your money is, your heart is. If they, if your employees have a vision on what you're trying to accomplish or what the company's trying to accomplish or the division that you're operating is trying to accomplish, then their heart is uniquely engaged in that entity, in that vision. Cortez is famously recorded as saying, burn the ships. The only way back to your family's friends is through the enemy. He had a team that sincerely caught where they were going. You may be asking yourself, Justin, why does it matter if my employees are bought in? That's a good question. I mean, wouldn't we be better off just having robots? <laughs> I know a, an executive who was all the time saying, let's just build robots. <laughs> no issues. <laughs> well, the reality is in a 2021 report by the Harvard Business Review, it indicated that 78% of companies who attempted to shift the way they do business fail in doing so. 78% of companies who attempt to change the way they do business fail. Now, whenever I hear that, I have to ask, why? Or what did the other roughly 22% do that the 78 didn't in order to gain success? They successfully elevated their company's growth whenever they transformed their focus to their team. Whenever they transform their focus to, hey, we're going to allow our team to understand what's taking place. We're going to allow our team to catch the vision. The company succeeded. It's so easy. It is so easy to focus on the product or to look at KPIs. For those of us who, who are analytical like myself, man, I love to dive into KPIs. I love to dive into product. But whenever, whenever we focus solely on EBITDA or EBIT or some sort of KPI that says the functionality of every individual employee and we lose that we're working with people, humans that have needs and cares and they sincerely get out of bed in the morning trying to put their what they can forth as the best effort, whenever we forget that, our businesses are doomed to fail, which is what this particular research paper shows. By taking an employee-centric approach that focuses on buy-in for your company's goals, you're setting yourself apart. Now, that would preclude the fact that you have a crystal clear mission, vision, and objectives. I've spent a lot of time on the podcast talking about that to this point. So before you can even gain buy-in, you have to be able to articulate what you're trying to accomplish. And if you can articulate that in such a way that connects with the way employees within your group connects, then you can bring them to the point to where they feel essential. They feel valued. I heard an employee this just this week say, whenever I feel devalued, I'm done. How many of our employees feel devalued right now? where they feel like they're just taking orders, not understanding where they're going. You know, people are the catalyst for success in our companies. People are the catalyst. Yet, HR and dealing with employees, it is frustrating. We've got to get our teams to buy in on the vision, not just become automatons, not just become robots that are taking orders. So how? How do we do it? We've got to build trust. It's not a us versus them thing. It's a we thing. Trustworthy leaders have put themselves at the front of the pack. We've all seen, I'm sure by now, some of the memes that float around where you've got a leader that's at the back, maybe with a whip on a chariot, kind of just cracking the whip over the employees versus the one who's on the very front line, just like towing the rope right in the, right in the muck and the mire with the employees. A true leader is one that is leading. They're out front. 
it's us. Hey, we're going together. So how do we build trust? We build it through honesty, through vulnerability. Hey, here's where we're headed. Man, I don't have all the answers, but let's do this. We got this. You build it through empathy, realizing that every single one of our team members are dealing with something they're not telling us about. Every single employee has something that's rocking their world, good or bad. Something on the home front or outside the workplace is impacting their lives. We need to be empathetic to that. It's not all about work. One of my favorite points in my company that I love to do was walk in and just sit down and talk 10 minutes, 15 minutes about life, about old songs, about a movie that we had seen, about a weekend event, just talking about, hey, how's the kiddos today? Moving it outside the business, it's not always about work. As a driving type of a business owner, someone who just really pushed forward, let's go, let's go, let's go, I have to remind myself that my, my team needs to know Justin, not Justin the business owner, but Justin the, the dad, Justin the father, Justin the, the same thing, Justin the husband, Justin the, the fishing guy, the guy who likes to plant, and, plant a garden around his tractor. They need to know that. Not only what the vision is and how we're going to overcome the next obstacle. So we have to build trust. One of the ways that we can drive our employees buy-in, aside from building trust, is to explain the why before the how. Simon Sinek wrote a great book. If you've never read it, it's called Start With Why. Start with why. Why are we doing this change? There are going to be a lot of critics automatically. As Dave Ramsey says, I can bail the hate mail. I love that statement by him. I've used it a lot recently because I've been seeing more and more hate mail in my own life. There are going to be critics. But if we can communicate why this change is important before we drive into the, the elements of how, then we can bring our team to the point to where not only are they advocates, but they've completely bought into what we're trying to accomplish. So the why before how consists of four elements. There are four different things whenever we explain the why that we need to get across. Number one is awareness. We need to present the problem and describe how we're going to change and solve it. So why we need to do this, here's the problem we're going to face. There needs to be a desire to participate in the challenge. We need to explain, okay, here's why we're going to do this, and we desire for all of us to accomplish this particular task in this way. How it's going to benefit the, the employee, the management, the organization, etc. We need to provide the knowledge and the skills to make sure the change happens. We're Okay, why are we doing this? Here's where we're going. Here's how we're going to do it. Here's the desire. And here's how we're going to educate before we even move in that direction. And we need to reinforce. In order to move change about, we've got to have awareness, desire, knowledge, and reinforcement. Another way that you can gain buy-in with your employees is through incentives. We can incentivize success. In small businesses, it's not uncommon for us to take on work long before revenue is there to provide compensation to team members. We get that. We get it as small business owners. We're not sitting on fluff pocketbooks that are, that's like a money machine in the basement that we can just throw dollars at it. We're not the U.S. government. Okay, We can't print dollars out of thin air, as some people like to say. But we can incentivize success. We can break up the challenge into small, very small initiatives, more manageable steps. We can place milestones and, and have employees reach milestones, and we can reward these milestones with cash. Maybe it's a bonus vacation day. Maybe it's a lunch. Maybe it's just a note. Maybe it's a public accolade. Maybe it's buying an ad out in the paper and, and acknowledging one of your team members did outstanding work. But we can incentivize success. Another way we can gain buy-in is transparency. Transparency. If anything, I'm probably more transparent than I should be many times, and I know it's caused problems in the past. But on the other hand, I know business owners who are the totally opposite of me where they're not transparent at all. They hold everything close to the vest, almost like we're the almighty oracle. <laughs> Friends, our team wants transparency. Let's go back to our football analogy. What if, what if the wide receiver was not running at the capacity which we knew they could run? 
but yet we didn't tell them. We didn't say, hey, man, your speed's dropping. We've been measuring your speed, and it's dropping significantly. What's going on? Are you putting 100% effort into this thing? What if the quarterback gets ready to throw a play, and he knows his arm is only capable of 60 yards, but the play requires a 75-yard throw? If he was not transparent, or if the coach was not transparent with the team, then that play would be doomed for failure. At the end of the day, we have to illustrate how the employee's efforts, how their task or how their day-to-day job is directly impacting the company. Now, one of the things I love to do, I love to show our team the bottom line. Hey, here's how much revenue we increased. Here's how much we cut expenses as a ratio. Here's how much our profits increased in the company. And here's what that means to you. That's one of the ways I love to be transparent. But if we're going to gain buy-in, we have to be transparent. Finally, the last way that I would consider gaining buy-in is tracking. Tracking. Now, I love to track data. I love to look at KPIs. I love to look at performance. I love to look at financials. I like to see metrics because I know whenever we track data, we have a baseline to which we can adjust from. So one of the things you can do in your own business is set the vision Gain the buy-in through honesty, through openness, through empathy, through all these things we've been talking about today, and then track it. And then show your team exactly the results. And if something's a little awry, something's missing the mark, just adjust. Now you have a metric to where you can say, hey, team, look, man, I know you busted it this last quarter. Wow, the amount of work and the amount of output y'all had in this particular project was monumental. Very, very good. We do need to make an adjustment, and it's not your fault. I didn't consider, as the owner, this particular movement, and so we're going to adjust to see if we can do a little less work for a little bit more output. We're going to see if we can make some little modifications here in order to drive our bottom line profitability. Remember, if we drive bottom line profitability, everybody wins. So one of the things I believe you can do is you can track and adjust. I love building a business plan. I love running 90-day to 180-day sprints being on the type of business and the department within the company we're working within. I love being able to track it and then look back and say, did we hit the mark we expected or were we off a little bit? How bad do we miss it? So friends, as we're trying to gain buy-in, you can track progress and you can adjust. So as we look at trying to move our employees, from potential critics all the way to where they're 100% bought in. Leadership from you, the owner, you, the manager, is going to be paramount. I've given you a few ways today that you can move your employees to raving fans. How about you? What in your business today, what actions are you currently taking that is causing discord within the company. Where did you drop the ball? Where did you as a leader not set the exact cadence or the exact trajectory proper? Do you have poor management within your company? Do you have the ability to track, the ability the ability to adjust? Is there a toxic environment? Friends, you can turn your critics into your advocates. You can. It's not easy. As I often say, life is hard. Doing this is, is hard. It's not easy. It can be frustrating, but it's what an opportunity. Friends, I got to tell you, there's nothing I enjoy more than moving business owners or moving employees into, hey, we work with XYZ company and we're having a blast. I know that's what you desire, the same thing that every business owner desires. Hey, if you implement one of these strategies, let me know how it works for you. Maybe you found a little twist that you can share with me. Connect with me on social media. Drop me a line. Go to financiallysimple.com. Leave me a little note there. I would love to hear how you implement this particular concept to turn your critics into advocates and ultimately those that have buy-in. Friends, until next time, y'all go out and make it a great day.